Hey, welcome to UK Wildcrafts. I'm in the Cotswolds and I'm just taking a walk down some country lanes and maybe into some fields, checking out the hedgerows to see what wild edibles I can find. In the UK, we're pretty lucky because we've got miles and miles of these hedgerows which are filled with wild foods. So I've got my basket and a bag. I'm mostly looking for nettle seeds. Once a year I'll come out and collect a year's worth of nettle seeds, but I'm also going to be keeping an eye out for whatever wild foods I can find. As I'm walking down the lane, I'm just keeping my eye out, but there's masses of these nettles. And in the summer, you can harvest the seeds from the female plant like this here. So these are the seeds. You don't want to harvest the male flowers, which are these here. They won't do any harm, they just don't have the nutritional value of the seeds. I've done a video in more detail about how to tell the difference. So I'll just collect the clusters like this by hand and then chuck them into my bag. You do get the odd sting doing it this way, but this time of year I find the stings aren't quite as bad as in the spring. So just from five minutes picking, I've already got quite a nice amount here, but I'll keep moving on and add into this as I go. But yeah, look, absolutely masses of these seeds. And what I like to do with these is I'll take them home and sort of lay them out, let them dry out a bit, and then give them a good shake up and then you can easily remove the stems. So then you've just got the seeds and some of the chaff, which is fine to eat as well. And I'll just dry them and use them for sprinkling into yogurts or onto muesli, into porridge, that sort of thing. There's a lot of uses for these. I find it's best to have these in the morning because they can give you quite a lot of energy. So it's best not to eat them before you go to bed. All along the edge of the grass here, we've got this plantain. This is broadleaf plantain. This time of year, we're after the flower stems like this. As long as they're nice and green, I like to eat these. The ones that are starting to flower and open and not quite so tasty. But this is perfect. Some smaller ones there. If you haven't tried these before, you might be quite surprised by their flavour. They taste almost exactly like mushrooms, as in the shop bought sort of agaricus mushrooms. So, what I like to do with these is steam them just for 30 seconds or so and then pan fry them in butter and just serve them like, like asparagus basically with scrambled eggs or poached eggs and it's quite a nice breakfast or I'll just chuck them in with a load of other greens if I'm doing like a stir fry or something like that. There's also dock seeds everywhere. I'm not planning on making a flower with these this year, so I'm not going to pick any, but they are edible. There's another huge patch of nettles here with loads of seeds on. I 
while I'm out on a foraging walk as well as looking to see what I can forage now I'm also keeping an eye out for what's nearly ready and I'm noticing there's lots of elder and the elderberries are starting to ripen so a few more weeks and I'll be picking elderberry I could have easily walked straight past these but as I knelt down to pick some of these plantain I just saw here got some lovely dewberries which are just perfectly ripe now they look very similar to blackberries but these are more of a low growing plant so you'll find them just a few feet off the ground normally the fruits have fewer segments than blackberry but the segments are larger and they have a bluish tinge to them and a whitish bloom on the berries I'm actually noticing there's quite a lot of these dewberries here one thing with dewberries is it's very difficult to pick them without bursting them so you usually get quite stained hands so these taste fairly similar to blackberries but they're a bit of a sharper flavour I really like these berries though I've not quite got enough here to make anything with but I'll probably just keep these for snacking on and the general rule when I'm picking berries every one that goes in the tub I eat two <laughs> here we've got common hogweed seeds they've got a taste a little bit similar to cardamom but a little bit sweeter These are great for flavouring curries. You don't need many because they are quite a strong flavour. But what I like to do is pickle them just in white wine vinegar, maybe a few other spices, and then keep them throughout the year takes a bit of the harshness out of the flavour as well when you pickle them I know I say it a lot on this channel but this is part of the carrot or apiaceae family so be very careful this isn't one for beginner foragers I'm going to pick some of these meadow sweet flower heads for making tea. Now, this plant you can smell from quite a distance away. It's got a beautiful, sweet, almondy smell, or like marzipan. I absolutely love the smell of this plant. And the flowers kind of have a cottony appearance when they're opening they've got a very frothy flower head and that's when you know they're ready to collect so this plant has long been used as a medicinal herb especially for problems with the stomach 
It contains salicylic acid, which aspirin is synthesized from. So you should avoid this plant if you're on blood pressure medication. So I think these flowers are best used infused into liquids, like I said, for making tea, which you shouldn't drink too often because it has quite strong medicinal values. It also makes a nice sweet aromatic cordial with an almondy flavour and it's good infused into vinegar or into cream. And traditionally this plant's been used to flavour mead. If you see this plant growing, go and give the flowers a good sniff. It really is a lovely smell. So this plant generally grows in damp conditions. So this is probably a drainage ditch that floods after a rain. And the whole of this plant is edible. The leaves I generally only eat when they first come up in spring. They're not one of my favorite greens, to be honest. Also the root is apparently edible. I've not tried it yet though. Okay, we're making a start on filling the basket. It's too late in the year now for harvesting thistles for eating, apart from maybe the roots later in the year. But for a bushcraft use, these seed heads are the best fire lighter in nature. Just the tiniest spark and these go right up. There's masses more of the plantain here as well, so I'm gonna pick some more. So plantain is a plant that likes to grow on well-trodden ground that's been compressed. So you'll find it all along next to paths. There's loads of it here. So I'll collect more of the flower stems. I'm also gonna collect some of the younger leaves because this plant is good medicine and what I'm going to do is use these leaves to make a poultice because I've got a load of tick bites recently and horsefly bites so what you can do is just crush these up with some water or even chew them up and put them directly onto the wound and they're antimicrobial so they can help stop infection which is great and you can eat these leaves too the young fresh ones like this make a pretty good salad green you can even use the bigger ones like this as a wrap as long as they're in good enough condition here's pineapple weed another plant that I like to make tea from and just like the name suggests it really does smell like pineapple. If you crush these flower heads, a really, really strong pineapple smell. They do have a pineapple flavor as well, but it's quite mild. So if you're making a tea from it, you need to use quite a lot to get a pineapple flavor. But even if it's not a strong flavor, it's still nice. And it makes a good cup of tea for in the evening because it's related to chamomile. It has calming effects when you drink pineapple weed tea. So it's a good one to drink before you go to bed.
This is mugwort. This has traditionally been used as a herbal tea to help aid digestion and to help with anxiety. I just like using it as a herb. I just pick a few of the flower spikes like this and dry them. And I like using them as a dried herb like you would for rosemary. What I'll do is I'll save some for the autumn and what I like doing is making a stuffing with the dried rosemary and chestnuts, some minced pork and onion. Makes a really nice stuffing to have for Christmas then. So you can eat these flower spikes and the leaves. A good indicator for mugwort for me is if you look on the underside of the leaves, they're quite a silvery colour. All right, that should do me for a quick hedgerow forage. So let's just go through what I've picked there. So I've got the mugwort, which I'll use dried as a herb, maybe making the occasional tea with that. The meadow sweet flowers, which I'll use for tea. I might pick some more soon and make a cordial with it. I've got the pineapple weed flowers just enough for one or two cups of tea there. The plantain flower stems, I'll just use those in a similar way to asparagus. And I've got the plantain leaves as well. The younger ones I'll use as a salad herb and I'll use a few for making a poultice for my insect bites as well. And I've got some hogweed seeds in there somewhere. I've got a few of these stems which I'll use pickled for using in curries and stews. I've got the dewberries which I'm just gonna eat as a snack and I've got a nice load of nettle seeds here so this bag's about half full. That's a good amount in there. I might do one more collection this year but that is quite a good amount in there. So I'll just take these home, spread them out on a rack, let them dry out a bit, pick out the, the few leaves and stems that are in there. And then I'll use the seeds for porridges on muesli and yogurt. 